I think that plant-derived compounds are a complete and total disruption towards the pharmaceutical model. There's many of these compounds perform well enough on their own that they don't require drug delivery. And when you look at something like Adderall, for example, right? Adderall is considered one of the best drugs in the world by people who abuse it. Mushrooms, I think, are self-regulated. Welcome to the Worth the Fight podcast, where we bring you powerful conversations surrounding the sensible and therapeutic use of psychedelics and plant medicines towards healing trauma. I'll introduce you to guests who, through their own personal journey and transformation, tell the Worth the Fight story. I'm your host, Matt Simpson, author of Worth the Fight, Acting for a Better World, a guide to spirituality, psychedelic medicines, and overcoming trauma. Thank you for listening. My next guest on the Worth the Fight podcast is Garen Angel, the CEO of Magical Butter. Garen is high vibe. Man, oh man, I enjoyed listening to this conversation and having it with Garen. He's a lover of life who believes that we are shifting into a magical time. I'm feeling that strongly as well. We talked a little bit about that with Stephen Kotler on episode number 15, these exponential technologies that have massive opportunity to level up um, ourselves, our loved ones, our circles of influence. Uh, Garen has a super strong pulse on Bullshit Incorporated. We talked a lot about how these plant medicines have a potential for disruption, a potential to disrupt some of the repressive forces. Yeah, these forces that don't have the best interest of the people in mind, these forces that value profit over people. Garen outlines how it goes. In time, as we break down the stigma about these medicines, people will heal, people will get right. Each family unit, yeah, five to 10 group, tight knit tribe that we have. We have all these, these separate kind of family nucleuses. The one or the two in that respective nucleus will heal, will get right, and they'll come back and they'll share the lessons of these healing and all the beautiful lessons that come along with this healing the lessons of humility, the lessons of letting go, the lessons of honesty, the lessons of living with integrity, and so on. So much to be hopeful for with this conversation. Please listen to the end of this episode as well. We have a big giveaway, a magical giveaway. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Without further ado, I give you my conversation with Garen Angel, the CEO of Magical Butter. Thanks so much for tuning in. Garen, how have psychedelic medicines informed your path? It allows the body to, to really see itself from the outside in. And what it taught me personally was to look at life without angles. So many people in relationships have an angle and life should be a spherical life. And when you're living a spherical life and you're giving all the energy of the earth back to it, you really hit your stride and you live without any any self-doubt. You live without expectation. You live without depression. And that's really the message that that I think psychedelics give you is it takes that edge off. It's that fresh powder to see a new trail and understand that you don't have to have an angle in your life. If you really want to be powerful, become a sphere. Become a sphere. Sphere. I like this. This is a a different way of, of looking at this. My impressions are uh, flow and, and, and um, you know, the, the edges, the rough edges, and the tyrannical minds that so many of us, we get caught in these rigid belief systems and to kind of align ourselves with the securitous nature of the human experience. When was your, when was your first experience with psychedelic medicines? When did your journey start? As a kid, I did acid at one time, and it was an interesting experience it was not at all for building my brain up or building my psyche up, my confidence. It was a, Hey, let's party and have a good time experience. And I'm not mad at at using stimulants for those purposes, but it's not my purpose for these stimulants. So I, you know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great experience. That was my first time. 
now I, I don't use psychedelics often. I use them when I want to do some, some work, when I, when I really have a question that I want to seek the answer to. And, and, and then I, I think there's two worlds, right? And we live in our own world day to day, the interactions that drive our local economy. But then there's this spiritual world, our brain that we live in, and it's anything we want it to be. And the collision between the two and manifesting everything you want in both worlds. So you're, you have all the joy and all the great serotonin running around your brain is important. And then being in tune with all of the people around you and making sure that you're giving them a joyful experience. Uh, that's the way that I look at the world. Beautiful, beautiful. The, um, yeah, it's, it's these, and that's, I think, the challenge right now with where we're at in finding that balance with what's going on in the world and, and finding that inner harmony. I think we're in a, in a and we, we talked about this a little bit on the pre-call, we're in a really special time where there's all these different modalities that we all these different tools, a full spectrum of these wonderful medicines that we're just finally starting to get an understanding of what they really are, along with exponential science that has given us more information about the human brain. You know, we've learned more in the last 10 to 20 years than we've learned in the previous 2000 combined. So it's, it's a fascinating time. I've watched a couple of your podcasts, and I, I gather that you're uh, an optimist, a fellow optimist here. What motivates you in your work? You've been very successful with uh, your being a CEO at, at Magical Butter and the pioneering work you're doing there. What motivates you to reach higher and, and to push forward? It's easy, in my opinion, to, for everybody to elevate themselves. And it's as simple as how many people can you serve? So what motivates me is how many people can I serve? There's a lot of people that are unserved or underserved. And if you focus on making their life better, you build community. And the larger community you build, the more you're motivated to help and help and help because you feel that energy. And that's really what motivates me is good energy. I am not a fan of negative energy whatsoever. You'd mentioned optimists. I think we're all stars, right? Like we're all particles in this world. And our job on our journey is to be bright and be a bright shining star in the galaxy. That's what motivates me is uh, doing podcasts like this, where we have a chance to hopefully inspire other people to just burn a little brighter today or tomorrow, to say hi or recognize someone they may not recognize on the daily and say thank you or or ask how you could help them even and put a smile on their face just because everybody in the world needs a little help at all times, whether it's just bringing groceries in or whether they have a mental challenge. Life isn't always easy, but you can live an easy life if you choose to. Ooh, love that. That's catchy. That last, uh, last bit. A lot to unpack there. The service really, really resonates. Um, my hero, Jamie Wheel, he says that we are stardust dressed as matter. And if you ask any, what was it, Neil deGrasse Tyson? If you ask him, he'll tell you that we're, we're indeed, from an astrophysicist standpoint, we are indeed stardust dressed as matter. And what you're saying really resonates. The, the first thing that you'd said there was, was service. And, and that has been such a profound part of my journey of, of shifting from a me, me, me attitude to recognizing the interconnectedness of uh, myself in relation to my brothers and sisters in relation to the natural world and honoring that i think it's it's very real it, life takes so long to unfold and we all try to live it on the by day by day but it takes weeks months years decades to really accomplish and do what you want to achieve and if you just live your life for your eulogy, you'll get everything you want to manifest. But we don't really do that. We think too granular. And I don't know, I'm a worker. So I think of myself like an ant, right? Like I put a lot on my back and I just constantly, I wake up at four. I like to go to bed, you know, 10, 11, 12. I'm one of the, 
the rare people that doesn't require eight hours sleep. I'm a four, five, six hour a night guy. And I, I just, I wake up raring to go. But I do think there's something important. Do you take time for yourself every morning? Every morning, yes. And what, what's, your, what's your routine? What's your regimen? Every morning you wake up, what is it you do first? Uh, meditate. Let's share our morning routine. Sure, yeah. Oh, I love this. I love this. Uh, I do, do, we do not talk enough about morning routines uh, thus far. Wake up right away, uh, 40 minutes of meditation. I do uh, Wim Hof breath work for 20 to 30 minutes. And I'd say I do the Wim Hof about five to six days a week, uh, the meditation every day, do some journaling, and then I get rolling. I've had stages in my life where I've had longer routines, but, but I'm in a kind of a go-go phase right now, and that, that's how I center and, and get ready for the day. How about you? So when you say you do a Wim Hof routine, do you do some cold weather as well, or his meditation techniques? What is it you I do, the, I do, you the do the with that? I do four to five, sometimes six rounds of this, uh, this deep power breath uh, that is technique, and then I will take a shower and, and take a cold shower. It was something that, that I've been doing consistently for the last three years or so. So for any listeners who might not be familiar, Wim Hof is really a, a, a legend in his own personal mind control and his ability to have athletic dominance in extreme years. conditions. Indeed. Yeah, really, really, really amazing human. I love him. Uh, had had the opportunity to meet him a couple times, and it, it, he's he's got great great energy. You just feel it when you're around him. He's he's a man of conviction. So really? I really I'm a big I'm a big fan as well. I do mine in bed, and I wake up pretty much like clockwork at 4 a.m. And when I wake up, the first thing I do is I thank God for 10 minutes. And I don't I it's my own God. It's I'm not. I think there's something bigger than us. And that's, that's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that there's something larger than us. And so I spent 10 minutes just thanking God for all of, all of the greatness of the day and, and of life and that there's something bigger than human consciousness on earth. And then my next 10 minutes is about thankfulness for my family, for my wife, for my kids, for for the things that are closest and dearest to my heart. And, and then I do 10 minutes of gratitude of everything that I have that I'm gracious for my career, my coworkers, the opportunities that are presenting themselves. And after that 30 minute period, I'll pick up my phone and I'll check, uh, you know, my emails or I'll, I'll start work. I'll watch a movie on Netflix if, if it's a Saturday or Sunday and I want to break. But basically 4 to 4.30 is my time to set myself up for manifestation of greatness. And you do that by being thankful, gracious, and realizing that there's things that are bigger than you. And that's the way that I do it. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. That's the, that's the time of day to do it, too, you know, with the whole world being asleep and, and the peace and the stillness. I just put a post out the other day about the paradoxical power of peace that only, I believe only from peace can we garner and connect with our deepest truth, our highest self or that, and even that infinite intelligence that you're describing, that higher power, that something, something more. And um, that's beautiful that you have that routine organized and the power of gratitude is something that uh, people are talking about more and more, not just in a woo-woo standpoint, but this is this is positive psychology now. This is this is stuff where there's hard science that is behind this uh, this kind of practice. Well, there's there's really two reasons. One is when you wake up, typically you're thinking about your problems, right? like all the stuff has to get done today. When you take that thirty minute break and you reframe everything towards all the things you love and then you 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 deal with your problems your problems solve themselves much easier because your problems are small when you think about all of the great things that that exist around life so that's 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 the one reason i like to do it and, and the the other reason is i do think you need fresh powder every day on your trail of your journey 
And what this podcast is really geared towards psychedelics. And in my opinion, what I think psychedelics do is they increase one's self-awareness. And that's the same thing. This is a daily exercise to increase your self-awareness, to realize that a lot of people would die for your problems. And you realize that when you start thinking about how great your life is. And it doesn't matter where you are in life. I promise you, there's a lot of people out there that would trade places with you in an instant. And when you always think like that, you're always thankful and you're always happy. So true. So true. It's such a, such a powerful tool to orientate our minds for the blessings that we already do have. And it's funny how they seem to multiply when we can orientate our minds in, in that spirit of gratitude. Yeah, I, I'm laser focused on helping people find health, happiness, and ultimately wealth. Because you have to have health and happiness to really enjoy any kind of wealth. There's a lot of people in this world, and perhaps why the world is a little upside down at times, is because if the wealthiest people in the world were happy, they would realize that dying with it isn't the best service of their legacy. It's actually spreading it as much as possible. And, and so getting, getting all of this combined is, look, get healthy, get happy, get wealthy, and then share it. Have fun with your life. Don't be miserable and make it the KPI to your journey. How much money you have in the bank account when you die is definitely not who wins. Your eulogy of I helped serve X number of people is the best kind of eulogy you can leave. Mm, beautiful. I hope that we, we are shifting our collective values in that direction. Uh, as Wim says, sharing is caring. And I could see him with a big grin on his face right now saying that. And um, everything you're saying so resonates with me. It's, it's about how are we impacting the world? How are we helping others? And I think so many people are lost in the in the game of uh, status and collecting more shiny things and full power and, and so on. I read your article that you'd had in Greenpreneur and I was really impressed with your awareness of, of where we are in this psychedelic renaissance. Where do you think we're heading? Where do you, where do you think we're heading with this? Uh, are, are there any fears, um, any threats, any, you know, is there anything that no one that, that is top of mind for you that, um, that no one else is really talking about? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that plant-derived compounds are a complete and total disruption towards the pharmaceutical model. There's many of these compounds perform well enough on their own that they don't require drug delivery. And when you look at something like Adderall, for example, right? Adderall is considered one of the best drugs in the world by people who abuse it. Mushrooms, I think, are self-regulated. So when you look at the ability to take people who are suffering from anxiety or ADD, then they wind up, they take an Adderall and then they take a Xanax because the Adderall gives them more anxiety and then they need a Xanax to calm themselves down. I really think that that cycle gets disrupted where people go from one pill to two pills to seven pills to 27 pills simply by installing adaptogens into their diet and letting food be thy medicine mm. and utilizing psychedelics to deal with their scars, becoming self-aware that their problems are not unique to themselves and that there's a lot of things out there that are bigger than us. And when we start to tune into that, we start to tune out of our problems. And what I believe that psychedelics do is they give the human brain the ability to tune out of their problems, but not in a way that disassociates them long-term with their day-to-day -day interactions and how it affects the people around them. When you see people on opiates and, and, and some of these other drugs, there's a disassociated property to this, their core 10 people that love them the most. And what we need is we need compounds 
that are plant derived that keep people in touch with the 10 people around them that matter the most and turn that person from being a negative energy source to a positive energy source in that force field. And every family has the same problem. If we took that one or two challenging energy forces from that family and we're able to turn them up to be the most positive people in that environment, everybody's family would rise. And that's what this is about. This is about reaching back and helping other people. So at first we're gonna to start to use psychedelics to reach back and get them out of pharmaceuticals. And then hopefully the long-term goal is that we connect their brains enough where I think a lot of these people that are out of balance might potentially be our most talented and most intelligent people on this planet and getting them plugged and wired the right way so that they can lead their families with positive energy and really show people that the world is beautiful, life is great, and plants are terrific. Wow. Profound. Wow. A lot, of, lot to unpack there. Thank you for that. I was really looking forward to asking you that question for that very same reason. Uh, I write in my book, Worth the Fight, the degree to which we know our know and face our darkness is the same degree to which we can stand and share our light. And I think that, that you just dissected in a very, very concise manner one of the top offenders of the bullshit incorporated hurdles that we have as a people to, um, and that is these pharmaceuticals. They, they do indeed disassociate people. And, um, and while the psychedelics do on a short term basis over the course of, of maybe four to six hours, they're very much an amplifier of self-awareness after the fact. And this amount of love that we feel is so profound during this, these psychedelic journeys and, and when, when they're administered in a safe setting delivered by qualified professionals to people that are earnestly hurting, I believe there's tremendous, tremendous promise. And um, thank you for laying that out. Uh, that is spot on. And I'm looking forward to re-listening to that and, 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 and gathering that wisdom. And I think... People are going to use these compounds recreationally, and I'm not the look. There's there's worse stuff out there to use. I that's not where my challenge is, and I know we covered this earlier. But if you need to get work done, and the traditional way you would do it now would be to go see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, sit on their couch, and over many many sessions, you're not getting into the subconscious that way. You're living in a conscious world and giving people filtered answers where when you really want to dig in and you want to, you want to get to the root cause of the problems, psychedelics help you get to the root cause of the problems and live without that fear, doubt, depression, anxiety, whatever it is. And it's not a panacea, just like cannabis isn't a panacea. Just plant-derived compounds work uh, across a, a large degree of problems. And that's, it's okay to accept the fact that part of this may also have a placebo effect. I don't care. I, all I care about is that a month out after somebody did something, are they better or worse for it? And when you look at things like cocaine, if you were to use cocaine for five days straight, are you better or worse at the end of it? You're, it's hard to argue that you're better off, right? Yeah. If you did low-dose low ayahuasca over five days in, a, in the right setting, I think a lot of people would come out the other side and say, that was one of the most profound things I've ever done in my life. I'm not sure I ever want to do it again, but I'm very grateful that I did it. And those are good experiences because anything you look back at and you say, I'm glad that I did it. You check the box you should check. But if you went on an opiate vendor right, after, after a five day experience, that's not good. Right. That, so I think that putting drugs in the right framework where they're utilized to do work, and 
doing them in a series of treatments, if you have work to get done, where each time you dig a little deeper at that root, that's going to be the long-term path to success. And there's several different protocols that people have outlined, whether it's, you know, three times over the course of a week, once over the course of, once a week over the course of three weeks, you know, once a month over the course of three months, whatever that, whatever that is. And some of them have maintenance programs. I'm not here to debate any of that. I just know that people can get to the root of their problems and, and, we, we do crazy treatments for depression right now where we shock the brain with electro waves and, and we use Zoloft to put people's brains in boxes. What if instead of putting those, those you know, people who have those negatives, teach them how to turn negativity into positivity through self-awareness and eliminating angles in life, lowering expectation of yourself and others, but waking up and working your face off every day because you want to achieve and you want to serve others. That's all we have to accomplish. That's it. That's, that's, that's all we have to accomplish as human beings to win. Mm. I, that resonates. Uh, the work is such a foundational part of the work that we do and the meaning that it creates for uh, the lives that we live is, uh, and I believe that these medicines, they give us that self-aware, they give us that space outside of the tyrannical ego and allow our, ourselves to see ourselves objectively. And from that objectivity, there's creative ideas that come forth, visions come forth, ways in which one can be a stronger, better, more loving, human being for themselves, for their loved ones, for their circles of influence. And that is why I'm so gosh darn optimistic as these medicines are pushing their way through clinical trials and this movement is moving forward. So I, I also think it's important for people to understand how you can recreate yourself. Whatever you're suffering from, you're always better than your last day. I, or your worst day and people get in this mindset where they're they I'm not good enough or I screwed up or you know I cheated on so and so or I did whatever like you have to forgive yourself you have to let those things go and apologize don't don't be a repeat offender if these are things that that bother you move on from your challenges and and free yourself from your history and look out the windshield of possibility. We're, we have, life is really your own rocket ship and you're an astronaut. And when you believe in quantum physics and you really start to tap into the possibility of powerful thinking and, and, and connecting to all the right energies, you can be a bright star in this universe very simply, regardless of your history, by just rewriting your future. And it's, it's find your trajectory. And if psychedelics are part of what helps you find your trajectory, use them. And if they make your life more negative, stay away from them. It's really that simple. I don't think psychedelics are going to be for everyone. I think if you have serious mental health issues or you're predisposed to schizophrenia, if you've had psychotic episodes in the past, I'm not a fan of telling you to use psychedelics. I think that there's a lot of people in the early days of this industry who are not discussing some of the people who should stay away from psychedelics enough. And, you know, if you have psychotic episodes, you should not use psychedelics, in my opinion. I think there's some lasting challenges towards people who you know, I, I've seen people stay in tricks from bad, from bad drugs. And maybe that's where big pharma le lends itself into this industry a little bit. I, I don't know that it gets to the finish line without big pharma's involvement in some of the standardization. So people know that there's clean medicines and I do think 
a lot of these plant-derived compounds can be grown at home and extracted at home. And Magical Butter and Magical Brands is at the forefront of giving people those tools. But I also, everything in life that you do to your body has a long-term cost and, and a long-term or a long-term benefit. What you have to do is find your own balance. And I think that mental health is, is the key, is, is the absolute KPI towards joy and happiness. And psychedelics for me, in the way that I use them to remove all angles from my life and become a spherical be being, have been an incredibly powerful tool. That being said, I don't suffer from schizophrenia or psychotic episodes. So I'm not afraid to let my mind go into the unknown. Yeah, I appreciate your word of caution as um, these indeed are not panacea. This is not a panacea. This isn't for everyone. I certainly uh, echo that same sentiment and that's a big central messaging of my book, uh, Worth the Fight, and the way that I look at really, really the program being a, it's an integration program, and, and how do we maximize these experiences? But at the end of the day, I also take a contrarian look, these psychedelic medicines, in the same way that we heal from these traumatic memories. So often we're people that are seeking these medicines and are healing from these. There's deep trauma in the early years of childhood development. Sometimes the, the trauma is pre-verbal. In the same manner that that trauma is held in our nervous system, so are these, these psychedelic experiences, these uh, ecstatic uh, experiences, blissful experiences where we're, we're you know, this, this, um, these deep, profound, revelatory experiences are also stored in our nervous system once we have these. And, uh, you know, I'm a big believer that it's then our job to ground ourselves and find integration tools so we can tap into that each day, like we were talking about with those daily practices and, and the morning routine. Are there any other integration tools that have been very, very helpful for you in addition to the gratitude and the prayer that you, you do? Uh, are you a meditator? Do you practice yoga? Um, so Yeah, I do. I don't do a tremendous amount of meditation. We do a daily stretch after our morning stand-up meeting at the office, it's really good to just do a morning stand-up meeting and then stretch a little bit and get your body loose for the day at, at the office. And our office is a, is a lot different. It's designed to be a place where you don't want to leave. It's not designed to be a place where you regret going to. I think that just setting that, that premise up for yourself do whatever you have to do to make your office be a place that you can't wait to get to mm -hmm. and make it fun. Gamify your life. It matters. If everything in life is a game, you're really going to enjoy the process because win or lose games are fun. I like that. Uh, that that's one thing. Uh, let me give the listeners another good one. Let's say you're having a bad day and you're listening to this podcast. Perhaps here's a little gem that I use. First, I'll do a quick 30-second breathing technique, right? Five seconds in. Hold it. Five seconds out. And I'll do that for 30 seconds. And I'll just, it gives my body a chance to recalibrate. That's all that does. So five seconds in, you know, deep. Hold it for five seconds, breathe it out. Do that three times. You've done that. You've done 30 seconds of prep work. Now look up at the sky with me and do this right now. If you're listening to this podcast, please do this. Look up at the sky right now. Close your eyes, put your hands out, palms up. Just look up at the sky. Now smile. Remember, you're having a bad day. This is an exercise for a bad day. Now smile. Smile as big as you can, right? You're looking up. Maybe you're looking at the sun. Maybe you're looking at your headline or your ceiling, whatever. Just smile and look up. Now try and frown. See how hard that is? You can't do it. You can't so when you're having that when you're having that bad day, take that break, take 30 seconds, take some deep breaths, let it out slowly, look up, take 20 seconds, smile, get a little light in your face, and then try and frown. And you'll realize that holding that smile is so much easier than holding that frown. And just by holding that smile, the energy, the problems, everything that's around you changes. 
And this is quantum physics at its, at its most basic level. It's how you elevate yourself because you project good energy. And when you project good energy, more people want some of your energy. And if all you're doing is putting good energy in the world, you're actually serving yourself better than serving anyone else. And, and now when you combine that with serving others in your actions and what you do to create your own economy for, for however you make money, now you're going to go to sleep and you're gonna be peaceful. And uh, let's take this same exercise back to the house. If you're not happy at home, and there's a lot of people that aren't happy at home. If you're not happy at home, I'd like you to look in the mirror and consider if you'd enjoy living with yourself. And the reason why I ask you that is because I had to do this myself. There was a point in time where I would work so hard and I'd have such a great day and I would come home and my, my wife would ask me how my day was. And instead of me saying, babe, give me five minutes to take a shower and just regroup, I would say it was a great day, it was really busy, blah, 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 right? I didn't inspire her to invest good energy in me, but by me saying, babe, I had a great day, I, it was incredibly busy, like I haven't had five minutes yet, I just, I wanna hop in the shower, I wanna recollect my thoughts, I wanna get my energy back, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna share with you how great my day was. And now what I've done is I've encouraged her to invest positive energy into me. And that's what I'm saying. If you're not happy at home, look at yourself in the mirror. You're working hard, you're coming home, you have expectations. Your partner is probably wanting to meet those expectations, but you're walking through the door with a neutral or a negative energy because you worked so hard at, to get home. Now that you're home, you can't change from a positive to a negative. You have to recollect your thoughts, walk in as a neutral, recharge the body, shower, get the day off of you, and get ready for your home life. And that's, that's another little gem that I have. Wonderful. That's a, a wonderful tool. Thank you for sharing your, your wisdom. The, the healthy boundaries are so, so, so important. And I think that you just highlighted the value of uh, speaking clearly and, and openly and honestly and expressing yourself in a authentic manner with our loved ones and the value of that. I listened to your podcast with Dave Asprey back in 2015 yesterday. It's been a little, little scouting mission. And um, you were talking about CBD back in 2015. And one would think that you were a fortune teller with, with all the things that you were saying about where this was heading and and I think you had said that it, it will one day be as revered or talked about as vitamin C. And it seems like we're getting there. And um, I've been fascinated about the cannabinoid system. Why do you think the cannabinoid system is something that, that we've been unable to study for so long? And what opportunities are there? Can you let us know? I'm sure that, sure that this, this is something you're on the forefront with your work. Yeah, the endocannabinoid system is, it, it's, it's vital to our health and life. And, and I, I think that cannabis is a dietary essential and cannabinoids are a dietary essential. I think mushrooms are incredibly important for our body. Um, we need more adaptogens. And, and it, if you look at, at our microbiome and you look at disease, when you start to understand that Every disease known to humankind interacts with the endocannabinoid system. Well, we're not studying the endocannabinoid system enough to understand how to control disease state or side effect of disease or prevent disease even better by manipulating the endocannabinoid system. And I, I, I think it's an area of practice that, that should be exploited. The challenge is the reason why there's not big pharma in cannabinoids is it's, it's a pretty effective drug in its own right. It's inexpensive. It, it grows like a weed. It, it's something that's hard to monetize. The only way you can monetize is to brand it. And the branding game isn't really the pharmaceutical game. The pharmaceutical game is a monopoly around a compound that cures a disease state or treats a disease state. So 
I, you know, like the conversation earlier with, with mushrooms and psilocybin, I, I feel like this is cannabis 2.0. And I'll, I'll go off topic here for just a minute because I think it's important. People want to understand the opportunities. I wrote that the way you and I connected was I wrote an article for Entrepreneur about the investing opportunities of psychedelics. The opportunity for psychedelics is, is a few, to brand them right? That's one way. To create healing retreat centers and to create ways to grow these plants or herbs, roots, all of it. So the, the small lag play is alive. And what we've done at, at I'll, I'll give you a little insight. So that way, any entrepreneurs or people who want to change their career, because they think that may be why they, they're not as joyful as as they want to be and psychedelics may be a path forward for them or cannabis. What we did, we bought the word magical around the world. So we own magical.com, Canada, Mexico, yada, yada, yada. And we're at magical on most of the, the social channels. And the reason why we did that, we think that we're entering a new, a new area of life where life really is magical and people are more gracious and thankful for the blessings and, everything that we have surrounding us. So I guess what I'm trying to say to you is figure out the message you want to send to the world, create a brand around it and, and get involved in the industry. If you want to, those are the ways to enter the space. I think it's small ag branding opportunities by delivering people trusted products or retreats to give people spiritual guidance because they have work to do. And they, they need talented, good energy people to get to the root of their problems and, and help them find a trajectory towards a, a world with no angles. Mm, thank you for that. Um, laying out that foundation for uh, the opportunity that lies here as um, we're pushing forward and, and this doesn't appear to be going anywhere. And uh, there's, there's a tremendous, like we talked about earlier, there's a tremendous amount of people that are hurting and struggling and self-abuse and depression and PTSD and addiction. And, um, you know, I talk a lot about the childhood sexual trauma as one who experienced that in my early years of childhood development and about how that has a, um, there's anywhere from 40 million, to 60 million adult survivors and 90% of us won't say a word about the trauma. And and, and so often people that are healing with psychedelic medicines, uh, that seems to be at the root. And um, my just cause that that I've bitten off in in that that similar spirit to what you'd said about finding finding your angle and owning that angle and, and pushing forward, I think that's what you'd said, has been working with our warriors and advocating for our war veterans, helping them get psychedelic therapy for the last few years. And um, I truly believe that healing the hearts and minds of our war veterans, those that know honor, integrity, and courage in a time where our leadership is struggling is a love-based solution that we can all rally around. We can all come together on. No one can hide from this discussion as, um, you know, we got 22 veterans that are dying by their own hand every single day. That number is likely far greater. And um, they fought for all of our freedoms. What are your thoughts and impressions uh, and, and about the importance of our war veterans in this psychedelic renaissance, in this psychedelic movement, as they can teach us, you know, a lot of the the lessons that, that I believe that we're ignoring. And I think that that's why there's, there's these energetic programs that keep people from engaging this cause when it's pretty obvious, like, well, guys, they're hurting and they're, they're dropping like flies. Let's rally. Let's, let's do something. What do you, what do you think about the, the impact that our veterans have on this movement? Veterans are everything for the world. In my opinion, they, they hold all of, all of the answers for the future. What they're tasked to do is unfair, right? Like the, the conditions actually pulling a trigger and killing someone. Right? That's, that's a brutal thing to do. I don't know that I could do it. I mean, it, given a situation with my family or, or something like that, potentially, but could I, 
take a job and shoot someone, that would be very difficult for me. And I understand the trauma. Some of my best friends are veterans. I've done, we've done as, as magical, we've done cross country tours to bring awareness to the, to the number of veterans who kill themselves and, and commit suicide. And the problem really becomes they're searching for purpose. They're searching for answers. They've been disconnected from the world and put in terrible situations. They come back and the world's different than it was when they left. And oftentimes it's difficult to adjust. So I think psychedelics are one of those things that bridges not just generations and decades and cultures, but it bridges history. It allows you to go back in your own history. It allows you to go back in world history. It allows you to understand things with purpose and, and, and have closure. You don't have to think that something is right or wrong. You have to give it closure. And veterans need closure on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I just was in Vegas with some of my favorite veterans. I, I love them so much. And we were out there at MJ BizCon and discussing actually psychedelics and how it worked for them. and and how they've utilized it to deal with some of their post-service issues. It's, it's challenging. I don't think people, if you haven't spent time with veterans who've, who've been in the trenches and, and seen the unseeable and the unforgettable, you need to hear their stories because you'll have nightmares at night just hearing it. And imagine seeing it and living it with your own eyes. I have a lot of empathy for veterans, if you can't tell. I love them. I think that they're underserved, unserved, uh, misserved, misunderstood, and, and they require a lot more attention than we give them on a global basis. Beautiful. Thank you for those, uh, your, your insight and perspective. And I agree on absolutely all, all fronts and, um, there's this uh, Thich Nhat Khan quote, veterans are the light at the tip of the candle, illuminating the way for the rest of society. If veterans can achieve wellness, peace, and, and um, inner harmony, then they can teach the rest of us the realities of war so we can have a time without conflict again. Um, and I think that that's really profound. I, I didn't uh, get that word for word. But um, I mean, that's my why for getting out of bed each morning, as I truly believe that if we earnestly seek a peaceful planet in this lifetime, hey, guys, there's no way around it. We have to heal our war veterans. They can teach us everything that we're ignoring as a people, the crazy systematic of child sex abuse by the church, perpetuated by the church. They teach us about the, the pharmaceuticals. Um, they teach us about really all of the the offenders, the bullshit incorporated uh, repressive forces that, that uh, I believe are, are at root for the discord that we see in our world. They teach us about those and hopefully in time error correct and find ways to um, create this better world that we, we'd all earnestly are seeking to bring forth. Yeah. And when I look at some, some parts of, of the world, I really look at it like this. I think that my generation was very sexualized, right? Like, and, and I, I, I'm not, I was never sexually abused, I, I, but I remember growing up, it was a very sexual time. And if you look at the world today, it's not nearly as sexual as it was. And I don't, I, I'm not saying in like, there's not still sexy people and all the rest of it. I mean, the culture isn't, it's not male driven, like, like it was pig, 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 pig. Like, I think we were in a very dark point in time for really until now. I, I, I feel that a lot of the Me Too movement and a lot of uh, this, this feminine strength and reach for uh, equality has, has made the world a much better place. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, I love this. I love where we're headed as a society. And I think our children, our children's children, our children's children's children, they're not going to, 
be exposed to a lot of this stuff at a young age like we were. Yet at the same token, right? They all have Garen, Garen, I want to be respectful. Have... Garen, I want to be respectful for to your time here. Uh, we're going to be uh, wrapping this up here. I'd love for you to finish that point and, and, and give us some parting words and let us know where people can find you. Yeah, I, so I guess to wrap that up, I'm just going to say this. I think look at the world, realize that being alive today is the best time ever. It's the best time ever to be alive for every every practical reason. You can You can find whatever you need, learn, earn, get it, hustle, work your face off, be happy. We're starting to see psychedelics be legalized. Cannabis is legalized. We're seeing drugs be decriminalized, which is going to make healthcare more affordable and improve public health. Be positive, be optimistic, be a bright shining star. I love you. The world loves you. Thank you for listening. You can find me. I'm Garen Angel from Magical Brands, also from Magical Butter. We make magical products to help people healthy, happy, wealthy. We love you. And uh, we're going to support the podcast. We're going to do some giveaways here. Matt, you've got two units. Give them away to your your fans. We'll send them Magical Butter swag packs, and together we win. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and for taking the time to to share your insight and and where we're heading as a people. And uh, so much, so much goodness here. Thank you for leading and shining bright. Much love, much love. Thank you so much and continue to spread goodness. I appreciate what you're doing. Absolutely. All the best. Thank you so much for listening to our conversation with Garen Angel of Magical Butter. That was super generous of Garen to offer two master bundle combo packs that are essentially everything you would need to create magical butter or a magical tincture. You just need your own marijuana, your own flour in order to register for this incredible value. Each of these packages are over a $200 value. In order to register, kindly leave a review on iTunes for the Worth the Fight podcast. Use the word magical in it and also send me an email at matt at nltrans.org to qualify for these incredible gifts that again include the master bundle includes the mb2 machine the dakar box thermometer combo pack a magical cookbook love glove oven mitt purify filter 190 purify filter 25 we got gummy trays spatulas all sorts of goodness that will level up your kitchen and have you in no time living a more magical existence Uh, Thank you, Garen, for your generosity. Thank you for listening to this podcast and for supporting the podcast. The reviews help us expand our circle of influence and to get these vital messages of hope and healing out to our human family. So thank you so much. We're doing the drawing on January 31st. So um, if this episode resonated, please share it with your friends. And uh, we're earnestly looking forward to push forward these very important conversations. So again, thank you so much for the support. Much love, y'all. Peace. This has been Matt Simpson of the Worth the Fight podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more about our mission of hope and healing at worththefightbook.org. Please rate, review, and share this episode. Please help us expand our circle of influence and get these vital conversations out to our human family. Also, If you are in a financial position to support the show, you can help us push forward these conversations with monthly donations on Patreon. This podcast is a tremendous amount of work for me, and I have stellar guests in the queue. Please help if you can. Thank you for listening to this programming. Much love, y'all. Peace.